So today I want to start another video on making a historical garment that's based on a Disneyland attraction. I have already done the Jolly Holiday, which is a cafe on Main Street Disneyland, and I think it came out so cute, and it was really good inspiration for something fun and kind of fancy to sew. So today I'm going to start my second video in the series, and I think I'm going to do something based on the Haunted Mansion. So for this garment, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more directly inspired, so I chose to do a remake of what the cast members wear at this attraction. Normally they have a maid uniform or a butler uniform, depending, and it looks kind of old school, historical historical-ish without any really specific inspiration from any particular period. So I think what I would like to do is remake the cast member's uniform but in a more historical way. For this project I'm probably going to be looking at 1905 specifically and I'd like to do a simple day dress with some nice embellishments as well as a black apron to go over it. Now if you actually look at the original cast member's uniform you'll see that the black and green stripy part is actually the overdress apron part and then they wear a black skirt underneath but for me I think that that doesn't make a lot of sense and it's much more likely that in 1905 they would have had the patterned fabric as the underdress and then a solid color for the apron. So for this project my plan is pretty simple. I think I'm going to use the black snail pattern Edwardian day dress which is from about 1905 and then I'll probably just draft an apron myself since normally they're pretty much just rectangles. So my plan for today is to at least get the PDF pattern taped together and then also cut out the pieces. So let's get started. All right, I have to take a second and explain to you why I am such a huge fangirl for black snail patterns. And it's because they put together their PDF patterns in such a thoughtful way that it just, just makes my life so much easier. Let me show you how they set up this piece. So this is one of the skirt pieces. And instead of making you tape together a thousand different pieces of paper from a PDF pattern, what they did was they gave you the top half and the bottom half of the skirt. And all you have to do is cut along the dotted line and add 10 inches between the two pieces. It's kind of genius. I was gonna cut corners and just do a turned up hem, but honestly, hem facings really do look so much nicer. So I guess I'm gonna take this out and do it again the right way. So I have time for a little bit of an update. The skirt is almost done. I really just need to finish up the waistband and do the buttons in the back. And next it's time for me to start on the bodice. I'm feeling a little bit intimidated by the bodice, so I think I'm gonna skip it for now and switch to the apron instead. I did a little bit of research, but honestly, aprons are pretty similar throughout a lot of histories. So I'm not gonna worry too much about historical accuracy because I think it'll look fine pretty much regardless of what I do. I do want it to be a little bit fancy though, so I'll probably do some pin tucks. I took some basic measurements on my dress form to help determine the proportion of the finished apron. It's pretty common to see Edwardian aprons become more narrow at the waist, so I took measurements for that as well. In this shot, you can see that I'm sandwiching the apron straps between the front and aligning for a clean finish. everyone time for a quick update I have pretty much finished up the apron at this point and now I'm going to finally get on to working on the bodice 
The reason that I'm feeling a little intimidated by the bodice is because it has boning in it and I don't know, it just looks scary. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and read through the instructions and see if I can figure out what's going on. And of course, I will let you in on the process. You're being kind of rude. Do you have to do that on camera? Okay, so the part that's kind of driving me crazy right now is all of these markings. So it clearly seems to call for some spiral steel boning, but I cannot find information on this in the actual instructions anywhere. I have no idea what's going on with this. Am I a complete idiot? The answer is yes, probably. So I often do this thing where I misprint patterns. I don't know, it's just really hard to get it right, to be honest with you. I flip the paper over and then put it back in the printer so that I can use the other side of the piece of paper and it's just like less wasteful that way. This piece of paper was not put in upside down. So all of these markings that I thought were related to this pattern have absolutely nothing to do with this pattern. Why am I like this? Now that I've gotten that figured out, this bodice is not nearly as complicated as I thought. As a side note, I did make some pretty significant changes to the collar and it does actually have boning in it, just not where I thought it was. Nothing super intense here. I sewed up the side seams and the shoulder seams for both the fashion fabric and the lining. And then I went ahead and pleated the bottom edge of the fashion fabric to match the lining. All right guys, I have been having so many fit issues with this and I just, what is happening here? And it just doesn't look quite right. I mean, I think the belly pooch doesn't look right because I haven't put the boning into the lining yet. I have been fiddling kind of like with the way the shoulders fit and all of that for a while now. And you guys, I think I figured it out. I forgot to clip the curve um, on the collar seam. So I'm like, I'm hoping that if I go back in and clip the curve of the collar, that it'll actually look a lot better. I think that totally fixed it. I had some trouble taking coherent footage of the sleeve construction, but basically you attach the cuff to the lining, right sides together, and then layer the fashion fabric over the lining. You pleat the bottom of the sleeve to fit the cuff, flip the cuff up over the edge of the fashion fabric, and then hand stitch in place. Time for a little bit of wrap up before I sign off for the day. I am actually, for the most part, really, really happy with how this project turned out. When I started it, I was a little bit nervous about having to match so many stripes, but I did not match any of the stripes and I think it came out fine. <laughs> the front of the bodice and the back pieces of the bodice are kind of solid, so there really aren't any major seams that are sort of staring you right in the face on any part of the garment. So I got kind of lucky in that regard where I felt like I could get away with not really matching the stripes. It's not great to be a little bit of a lazy seamstress, but sometimes I would rather finish a project quickly and in a way that I like rather than doing everything perfectly. And I feel like that's okay. So no matching stripes on this project. On that note, there are some things that I was a little bit lazy about that I kind of wish I hadn't been. Normally, if it's a bigger project, I'll make some kind of muslin before I actually cut into the good stuff. 
But on this project, I didn't. I have used black snail patterns quite a few times in the past, and I've always been really happy with the results. So it just didn't seem like a big deal to skip the muslin, but unfortunately for this one, everything fits not quite right. I think my biggest complaint is definitely with the sleeves. I'm not sure if I'm secretly like super tall, I'm not. But all of the sleeves on my historical garments seem to consistently be coming out a little bit too short. And I really wish that I had anticipated this because it's so easy to add an extra two inches to the sleeve and then cut it off later if you don't end up needing it. But as it stands now, they're a solid probably two inches too short. Next time I make this pattern, I will definitely be making some minor adjustments just so that it fits a little bit more the way that I would like it to. Other than that, I think I'm really happy with how everything came out. This apron taught me that my dog sheds. I did not know that. He's a golden doodle, so I had always really been under the impression that he doesn't really shed. But I picked him up and I was just like... This is why witches have black cats as their familiars. Anyway... I was planning on doing one more ensemble in this series, but I haven't picked out any Disneyland attraction for it yet. So if you have a suggestion for the next Disneyland ride or building that you think I should do a historical ensemble based on, please, please let me know down in the comments. I could really use some inspiration on this one. I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.